The wise person is principled. They have integrity. They have a certain set of principles that they live by. And they stick to those principles even when it's difficult. Which is pretty rare. It's rare to find highly principled, integrous people without devolving into dogma and mental rigidity. So there's a difference between being principled and integrous versus religiously dogmatic, for example. Just following certain rules that people programmed you with. Principles are things you develop yourself. You derive these principles yourself. These are not the Ten Commandments that you've read in a book somewhere and you've memorized and now you parrot them like a robot and act them out like a robot. Rather, you, through your own contemplative efforts, through studying life and studying your own self, you derive principles. These principles are deep, profound lessons that you learn from experiencing life. And then, uh, and then you follow those principles. These are the principles of wisdom. And so wise people have these principles, and unwise people don't. Or they're unable to follow their principles. They might have a set of beliefs, like maybe a lot of religious people will believe the Ten Commandments, but then do they actually follow them? No, which means they're out of integrity. And to even value having integrity, that already requires a fairly high degree of wisdom. Why is integrity important? That might not be obvious to you. Well, you have to contemplate that and you have to experience what it's like to live life without integrity or to interact with people without integrity. And then you'll learn the, the lesson of, of why integrity is important. Wise people are willing to do the right thing when called when the situation calls for it. Wisdom is self-disciplining. Because one of the principles you'll learn as you go through life is that without self-discipline, you can't live a good and peaceful life. You're always going to be tormented. And so wise people, they have a intrinsic sense of motivation. They don't need to be whipped externally by some taskmaster to live a good life or to eat the right food or to abstain from certain traps and dangers in life. They just do it through self-discipline. And this they learn through experience and by making mistakes. You learn the dangers of being undisciplined and then you learn to discipline yourself and then you are motivated intrinsically from the inside rather than from the outside. You don't need to be paid a bunch of money or given a bunch of compliments to do the things you need to do to be principled because you value being principled in and of itself more than you value the money or the praise, or the love, or whatever you're getting from somebody else. See? The wise person has an internal locus of control, as it's known in psychology. The wise person takes responsibility, doesn't blame others for their own inadequacies, or problems, or suffering in life. The wise person understands that he or she is the central agent of life. And therefore, any problems in life, they come through you, through me. And in that sense, I'm responsible for them. I'm responsible for how I'm going to respond to situations. The wise person does not avoid emotional labor, but faces it head on does the difficult things that need to be done to live a good life. That's closely related with the self-disciplining. 
The wise person is able to abstain from and to control his or her cravings. Isn't a slave to cravings. Because if you're a slave to your cravings, then you can't be principled. You're just going to be doing whatever your cravings want you to do at that particular point in time. And of course, that leads to a life that's full of suffering and deep mistakes and regrets and errors and catastrophes and disasters. The wise person highly values education and learns from the mistakes of others. Yes, you can learn from your own mistakes, of course, and you should, and that's going to be inevitable if you're going to become wise, but wouldn't it be wise to learn from the deep history of mistakes that mankind has made before you? You can read history books, you can talk to your elders, to your parents, to colleagues, and ask them what the mistakes they've made and learn from their mistakes so that you don't have to go through the same errors, fall into the same traps that they fell into. Humans have been alive for hundreds of thousands of years. We mostly face similar survival challenges, and uh, we fall into the same kind of traps. So, really, there's not much reason for you to make mistakes in your life as long as you're able to be forward-thinking enough to, to read and to study lessons of history. And then you can avoid many of those mistakes.